Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to use C-sharp.net and Visual Studio to create a very simple uh, tic-tac-toe uh, Windows application. Um, so let's jump right in. We're going to go to File and choose New Project. We'll give our project a name. Say WinForm Tic-tac-toe. And what you get is uh, when you start out as a very uh, basic setup, right? You have some, some uh, components over here, you have properties over here, and then you have your form that you're working on here. Um, if we ran this right now, we would get a very simple uh, Windows form, right? Um, nothing, nothing too exciting because we haven't done anything yet, right? So starting off, uh, you know, there's a couple things that we may want to do um, with respect to the form. We might want to get rid of this icon. We might want to change the name. Um, if it's a tic-tac-toe app, we, we probably don't need to be able to minimize this, or I'm sorry, maximize this. Um, and then we can sort of begin starting to add components to it. Um, so let's do that first. The first, uh, let's get rid of the icon. So if we uh, select the form and come over here to the uh, properties dialog for the form, you'll see that there is a property called show icon. And you can either use the drop down menu here or you can double click it to toggle that setting to false. Um, also, the text property of the form is what is used to show the title. So I'm going to change that to tick tac toe. Um, and then there's also a minimize maximize box, right? Um, so we don't want to have the maximize box enabled. So again, I'm going to double click that. Um, and now when we run this very simply, um, you'll see that we can no longer maximize our form. The title now says tick tac toe and we've removed the icon. Okay. Um, so uh, first things first, we probably need some sort of file menu uh, or, or menu setup that will allow us to close the application, start a new game, and then you know you always have the help about. So I'm going to come down here and find a uh, uh, tool strip, and I'm going to drag that onto my form. Now you can double click it, um, or you can uh, I'm sorry, you can double click it or you can drag and drop. And actually, I don't want a tool strip. I want a menu strip is what I want. Menu strip. Sorry about that. Um, and so the menu strip, the way this works is you can very simply type in, um, you know, what sort of structure you want in your file menu system. So um, traditionally with Windows applications, you'll see a file menu and you'll see a help menu. Now, if we come and select file, we can now begin to add sub menus and so forth. So I'm going to just very simply have a new game um, option and an exit option. Uh, help, help, help menu. I'm just going to have uh, an about. And now, when we run this, just with that very simple addition, um, what we get is a uh, menu system. Very simple. Uh, and these buttons obviously don't do anything yet because we haven't told them to. So um, I'm going to close him back out. Before we start uh, making our our application do things, let's go ahead and get um, our sort of tic-tac-toe area uh, added. And the way that we're going to accomplish that is by simply using buttons. Um, so what I'm going to do is just drag a button on here. Now it's going to have nine buttons, right? Um, each button is going to be basically the same. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, format one button and then I will come back and copy and paste to get the other eight. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resize my button. I'm going to make it 75 by 75 pixels. Uh, I'm going to change the font. If you look for the font settings, you'll see that here. And uh, it's only going to have an X or an O on it, so I'm going to make the font kind of large. Uh, let's try 20, maybe 28. All right, so that's really big. Um, and just to test it out, let's see what it looks like if we change the text and just put an X in there. Cool, so that's about right. Um, we obviously don't want an X in there yet. We want it to be blank at the moment. So we'll, we'll leave that there. Uh, I'm going to resize my form a little bit uh, temporarily. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this eight more times. Now, uh, Visual Studio has some nice um, auto alignment features. Uh, if you uh, didn't want to use uh, allow Visual Studio to snap in and auto align for you, you can certainly select multiple components on your form and use the alignment features that are provided. So we'll go ahead and add these guys in here. Okay, so once we have nine buttons added, I'm gonna kind of recenter them inside of my form and then 
adjust my form so that it's about the right size and it looks it looks nice okay so when we run this now again we have these buttons do absolutely nothing these buttons don't do anything yet but we have basically all of the things that we need um, to create visually uh, a tic-tac-toe application or game okay so the next thing I want to do um, because it's going to make our lives easier um, when we start trying to handle events and trying to figure out who won or, or if anybody has won each time somebody makes a move, um, I'm going to rename a lot of these buttons. So by default, when you put a component on a win form, uh, Visual Studio gives it a, uh, a name, just a generic name, button one, button two, etc. And so what you'll see here, um, you know, as, as we click on the buttons, is uh, the, the name of the instance is actually changed to whatever the default is. So I'm going to rename these and I'm going to go, this is row A, B, C, column one, two, three, um, just so we can keep track of which buttons are being pressed and which buttons we need to look at. So I'm going to rename this instance of a button A1. This one will be A2. And this will be A3. Uh, this will be B1. You get the picture. B2. And again, this will make things a little bit easier for us uh, when we start trying to figure out if anyone has won or not. Okay. So we basically renamed all of our instances of buttons. Um, so let's tackle some of the easy things first. Let's let's go to our help menu and our about, uh, where typically you would get a uh, message box that shows you know who wrote the software, what company wrote the software, license agreement, that sort of thing. Now what, the nice thing about Visual Studio is you can uh, to create event handlers. These are all event-driven applications, right? To create an event handler, you can simply double-click on a button, or um, if you select a, a, a component, you can come over to this uh, lightning bolt in the properties menu, click on it. And these are all the different events that are associated with that particular component or that can be associated with that particular component. If there's no method listed beside them, then there's no event handler for that particular um, event. So because I just double clicked on this guy, you'll see that there is something here um, in the click event handler, which is also visible now in the code behind the win form. Um, which is a really nice feature Visual Studio provides is it creates the shell of the method for you. Um, if I come in here and I remove this guy, you'll notice that it disappears from back here as well. So I incidentally do want to have that event handler here. So I'm going to come in and double click about again. Um, and then what we want to do is basically when a user clicks on that button is we want to show some sort of help about screen. Um, the message box actually is, uh, is, or the show method for the message box is very overloaded. Um, there's lots of different uh, parameters and setups that you can use. I'm going to use this one where the first string is what the message will show and the second string is the caption of the text box. So the first message, or I'm sorry, the, the message I want to show is um, by Chris. That's my name. And I'm just going to say we'll say tic-tac-toe about. We'll close them off. And now we can test this, right? So if we run this guy, when we click help about, we now see a message box that says by Chris and tic-tac-toe about. Okay. Um, what else can we do that's very simple, right? Uh, an exit uh, button, very simple. Double click on that to create an event handler and we're going to say application dot exit. Simple enough. Got to put some prints there. And again, uh, now if we run this guy, if we do file exit, our application closes, right? Just what we're looking for. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select my form again and set this guy to start in the middle of my screen. Just so it's always there in the middle. Okay. We'll, we'll tackle a new game of the of the file menu in a few minutes, but um, let's start begin thinking about what we need what we need to have happen when we press a button. Um, so when we press a button, um, we want, depending on whose turn it is, to either get an X or an O visible on that button so that we know that the 
uh, button has been pressed and someone has basically uh, made their mark there. And then we want to disable the, the button so that someone else can't overwrite what that person has already done, right? Whoever's turn it was. So if we go in our code behind, there's probably a couple variables we're going to need to be able to use here, right? Um, one of them is going to be whose turn it is. So uh, true, false, right? X and O. So let's create a uh, Boolean variable called turn and let's set it to true. And what we'll say is when it's true, it's X's turn, or we'll do it this way. We'll say true equals X turn, false equals Y turn, right? Oops, there we go. Um, the other thing we need to probably keep track of, or, or an easy way to do it, is how many turns have taken place, right? Once there have been nine turns, if there is no winner, then we know it's a draw. So let's do so let's create a, an integer variable called um, turn count, initialize it to zero, and uh, we'll increment that every time someone makes a, uh, or a user makes a clicks a button, makes a move, right? Um, now these buttons are all going to function basically exactly the same, right? They're, when you click them, it's either going to show an X or an O, it's going to disable itself, and then it's probably going to run some sort of method or subroutine that's going to check to see if anybody has won. So we don't want to necessarily create a button event handler uh, for every single one of these buttons, or I should say we don't want to create a different event handler for every single one of these buttons. We want to create one single event handler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the button, or I'm sorry, I'm going to select the button. I'm going to come over here to my lightning bolts where all my events are, and I'm going to call this button click, just very generic. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply the same method to all nine of those buttons. So, oops, you'll notice when I did that, it created the button click method for me. Um, and now I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to paste this method for the click event for all nine of these buttons. Okay, now if we come back to our form right now, our, our button click event handler doesn't really do anything. Um, but what we need to do now is we need to start thinking about how we're going to get an X or an O to show up on this button once we click it. Um, the nice thing about this event handler is that um, the button that is pressed is actually passed to this method as a parameter. You know, it's passed in a generic object form. We know that these are all buttons. So the first thing we can do is we can create a button and cast this object, this generic object, as a button. So we'll say we want to make the sender object. Um, this will basically convert the sender object or cast the sender object that's passed into this method as a button, and then we're going to store it in B. Okay. And now we can start talking about um, button properties that are associated with the button that was pressed. So uh, when a button is pressed, if it's X's turn, we want to put an X in the box. If it's um, O's turn, we want to put an O in the box. And the way that we know whose turn it is is by looking at this Boolean variable. So very simply, we can say if turn, right, true, false, then we want to say b.text, which is a text property of the button, equals x. Else we want to say equals O, right? After we put the x or the O on it, we also need, know that we need to say it's somebody else's turn now, right? So we can say turn equals not turn, right? That's going to be, if turn is true, not true is false, that's going to flip the, the turn for us. Um, the other thing we need to do is we probably want to disable the button. Um, and the reason that we want to do that is because if we don't do that, someone could come behind us and change um, the value, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll leave that off for a second and we'll run it just to make sure this is functioning as we would expect, right? So if I press that, I get X. If I press this, I get O, X, right? Oh, you see, you see what's happening. Um, but because we didn't disable the button, now if I click it again, I can change the value once it's already been set. So we can, we can basically uh, mitigate that by saying B dot enabled, which is a property that says whether or not the button's enabled and set that to false, right? Now when we run this, if we click X, X shows, but I can't change it now. It's disabled, the button is disabled, right? Cool. 
Okay, so the next thing we need to probably start thinking about is every time someone makes a move, we should probably check to see if there's been a winner. Um, very pretty simple to do that as well, right? So let's create a method called um, check for winner. All right. Now this is where the renaming uh, of our buttons is going to basically uh, come in handy, right? Because what we want to see is uh, the, we need to get the label value of every button um, on our form, right? So we need to know if it's an X, an O, or if it's a blank, or you know maybe if it's enabled, we could take that approach as well. Um, and we need to look at it, and we need to see if these three are the same, if these three are the same, these are the same, same with the columns, and then we need to check diagonally, right? Um, so the way that we can do that, um, Visual Studio or C# .net has a great um, way to do this that makes it really easy. Uh, so we're saying basically for each control in our win form, right? Controls is a uh, basically a enumeration or a collection of all the controls on our win form. Um, and what we're going to say is for each control on our win form, we want to do some sort of evaluation, right? Um, or actually, you know, we could do it this way. Maybe it'd be a little bit easier. Let's do this. Let's go very simple. Because we know the name of, uh, and this is why we did it, frankly. We know the name of uh, each button, and we know how they are set up. So let's do it this way. Let's say if a1, which is a button, dot text equals a2 dot text and a2 dot text equals a3 dot text then we know we have a winner right so let's create a, a boolean variable that will update it says there is a winner Right now we'll initialize that to false, right? So if this if this is true, if if these if this statement evaluates to true, then we know that all three of these buttons match, right? So let's say there is a winner equals true. Now we can kind of copy this over two more times, right? So right, so we want to say the same thing is true with B and B and oops. And B, and B, and C, right? So this is going to take care of all of our horizontal potential tic-tac-toe winners. And we'll comment this, right? Horizontal checks. So <clears throat> we also need to probably call this method from our button click, right? check for winner right so uh, let's see. Um, yeah so every time we push a button we're going to change the label we're going to change whose turn it is and then we're going to set the button um, to uh, disabled and then we're going to check for a winner now what we have so far is basically checks that will see if there is a horizontal winner and all we're doing is comparing the labels on the buttons to see if they all match. If they all match then we know we have a winner, right? So if we run this, what we would expect to see um, is X. Oh, you know what? We don't say anything if there is a winner. Let's do this. Let's add one more piece to this So before we test it. Let's say if there is a winner message box dot show and we'll say whoever's turn it is right and let's figure that out because we have to base that on whose turn it is um, string winner we'll just that there if uh, turn winner equals O, right? Else winner equals 
x. All right, so we want to show on our text box winner and we'll say for the title yay okay so what we're, what's going to happen here is basically we have a uh, boolean variable um, we check to see if it ever gets um, if, we, if we have horizontal uh, tic-tac-toe on all three rows um, and actually we can make these else's because if one is true we don't need to do the rest right um, then we say if there is a winner then we want to basically shoot a message box to the user saying there is a winner okay so do we think this is going to work how we want it to right Right now, this just said there is a winner, right? And obviously there's not a winner. The reason this is saying there's a winner is because the text uh, values on each of these buttons are the same, right? They, they're empty, but they are they all match. Um, so we need to add one other piece to here that also says, is we want A1 to not be enabled, right? And then we'll put, and I'll explain this in just a second. This should get us there, I think, right? We're checking horizontally. So if all three of these are the same and this one is disabled, that's the only way that all three of these could be the same, right? And ostensibly, if this one is disabled and they're all the same, all three are disabled. But so we don't have to check every single button. We can just check the first one in the column, or I, it, frankly, it could be any um, button in, in that row uh, would suffice. So let's try this again now. Let's run this and see if we get what we expect. So you'll notice that solved the problem where we don't have, have it showing that uh, there's a winner yet. Um, o, X, O. Now we have three Xs. This button is disabled, so now we have a winner, right? Um, so let's think about this too. When we have a winner, what probably needs to happen? We probably want to disable the rest of these buttons, right? Otherwise, you can keep playing, right? <laughs> Which we don't want to do. Um, so let's create a method called um, disable buttons. And this is where it'll be nice to be able to loop through each component on our win form. A little ahead of myself earlier. Okay, same idea as as up here, where we had to cast the button um, or the object into a component. Um, right, component is pretty generic, so um, we need to basically turn this component into a button, right? Oops, this should be C. Why don't you like that? Component C in components. Oh, why don't you like that? Let's try this dot components. Oh, still doesn't look right. Let's try this again. In components. Let's do this, but maybe. Well, do you love when you um, run into problems? When things don't work like you think they should. Oh, it's not component. I'm sorry. I'm control. In controls. There we go. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. Um, 
Okay, same same idea though. Control's a generic object. We need to convert it to a button, and then we need to, uh, you know, we when we cast it as a button, then we can start talking about button properties. And so basically, what we're saying is for each button on our form, we want to disable it, right? Simple enough. Um, that will disable all buttons on our form. Um, and then what we need to do is if there is a winner, you know, we can put it right here in the top, right? We can say disable buttons. Oops. Disable buttons. All right, so if there is a winner, we're going to disable the buttons. We're going to figure out who the winner is, and then we're going to send a message box to the screen that says there is a winner, right? So let's see if our disable buttons works. So X, O, X, O, X. So we have a winner. Um, all the buttons are disabled. Uh, ah, so it doesn't like this, right? Basically, what this is saying is that we tried to cast our menu strip, which is not a button, to a button, right? And so that's why we got a runtime exception. So we can mitigate that by simply dropping a try catch block around this. We don't need to do anything if we catch an exception. We just need to ignore it. But we have to have that try catch block there, right? If we try this now, we should run into no problems, right? X wins. All of these buttons are set to uh, disabled, right? So the game's over. Um, now, we also probably need to accommodate for if uh, there's a draw, right? So if there is no winner, or if there is not a winner, we should probably check to see if um, there's a draw. So remember we said we created a turn count uh, variable up here, which we wanted to increment every time a button was clicked. So we didn't actually put that up here yet. So um, let's go ahead and add that. We'll say turn count plus plus, right? And now down here, we can say if turn count equals nine, then we want to say it was a draw. OK. So let's test that out. So basically, we added uh, one more piece of code into our button click event handler that increments every time a button is pressed. And then um, inside of our um, check for winner method, we say if there is no winner, um, then we're going to check to see if the turn count is nine. If the turn count is nine, then we know that we have a draw, right? So let's let's give it a shot. So x o x o x o, right? So we've we've had nine turns and nobody won, so we have a draw, right? and the game is over. We don't need to disable all the buttons because if this happens, all of the buttons are already disabled. Okay, so let's go back up here um, and finish out all of the checks that we need. So we've done the horizontal checks. We also need to do the vertical checks, right? So vertical would be um, A1 equal to B1 and B1 equal to C1. And then we would have A2, B2, B2 to C2. And then we would have A3 to B3, B3 to C3. Uh, and then for each one of these, we can look at A1. We can look at, oops, A2. And we can look at A3, right? That should take care of our verticals. And then the last thing we have um, is the diagonal, right? Diagonal. So we only have two diagonals, so we don't need him. All right, so this would be A1 to B2 and B2 to C3. And then we would have A3 to B2, B2 to C1, right? And here we can check for A1, and here we can check for C1. Oops. C1. 
C1, right? Yeah, so this would be A1, B2, C3, and C1, B2, A3. Okay. Oops. So let's test this out now. All right, let's go for a vertical tic-tac-toe. We got it, right? X wins. Um, let's try it again with uh, diagonal. Right, X wins. Um, let's let O win one just to make sure that's working how we expect it to be working. So O wins, right? Okay, so the only thing we have left to do, we've done our help about. That's working. Um, we've got our exit working, um, but we need to be able to reset the board for a new game. So let's click exit and um, let's go back into our form and let's uh, double click on exit. Oh, not exit, sorry, on a new game. Now what we need to do for new game is we need to reset all of our buttons, right? Um, and then we need to reset the turn count and we need to reset whose turn it is. And because we're in charge of this, we're going to say that um, it's always X's turn. So we're going to say turn equals true. X always goes first. Um, and then we're going to say turn count. We're going to reinitialize that to zero. And then what we have to do is we have to loop through each button and reset it, right? So I'm just going to copy this same code from here. And I'm going to say for each control on our form, we're going to try and convert it to a button. If it's a button, we want to enable the button. And then we also want to set the text on the button to be blank, right? And uh, that should solve that problem for us. So let's run this guy now. If we do XO and we decide we didn't like that start, we can click new game. It resets everything. Uh, we can start again, right? Um, uh, we have a winner. We don't want to close out and have to come back in to start a new game, so we can click new game, and we start again. Oops. And there you go. A uh, very simple um, tic-tac-toe application um, that's event-driven and uh, built using uh, Visual Studio and uh, C-sharp.net. Um, good luck. Give it a try. See, uh, see if you can uh, do it yourself. Take care.